Today we also grieve for the future home buyers of Australia. As a Liberal, we strongly believe in the importance of home ownership and that people have an equal investment in our society and a pathway to achieve that investment. Sir Robert Menzies was one of the great stewards of Australia's emerging middle class throughout the second half of the 20th century and understood very importantly how home ownership is central to the dignity, the security that Australians enjoy. And during his time, it increased from 53% in 1949 to 73% in 1966. Yet since 2002, we have seen home ownership among 25 to 35 year olds fall from 39% to 29%. That represents more than 660,000 young people that would otherwise have found keys to their own home. While Australia's high level of social mobility is enviable, and it is, current trends in housing affordability are creating a class divide between homeowners and renters. Younger generations risk being unjustly subdivided based on whether they were able to buy a house and benefit from real estate appreciation much like their parents. Removing negative gearing might sound very attractive solution, but it will actually do very little to impact on house prices in real terms. There is no single driver of increase in housing prices. There are many of them. There are issues of supply. There are also issues of regulation, particularly at a state level, where over-regulation extends time and cost and uh, makes it more difficult for people to be able to invest and build the housing stock that we need for all stages of life, not just for younger Australians, but also for the sort of housing that people need in latter stages of their life. There are also planning restrictions and regulations and a lack of available financial instruments to enable people, particularly as they're going into the housing market, to be able to secure the advancement they need and finance their future investment in a constructive way. To put it simply, to achieve a two-year decrease in the time an average income earner would need to save to reach a 20 per cent deposit on a median house price in Brisbane Labor solution would need to deal a blow of 20% to house prices, which is well above the estimated decrease of 9.5%. That's why we can't focus just on negative gearing. We have to look at something much more substantial. Loan repayments can be difficult. Um, comparable, uh, loan repayments difficulty is actually comparable to historical norms. Given the current low cash rate environment, affordability on this measure is actually higher than it was six years ago. Aspirational home buyers rightly identify the deposit gap, the deposit gap, as the most decisive barrier to home ownership. Sadly, the gap turns home ownership, home ownership into a fantasy for many young people who then spend their savings elsewhere. These aspirational home buyers could be given access to their superannuation in order to secure a housing loan. Once the deposit gap is bridged, repayments rarely differ significantly from rent or for, uh, for similar dwellings. The Productivity Commission noted in 2015 that the most frequent use of superannuation lump sums was to fund housing, so this hardly undermines the integrity of the system. Ultimately, we need to focus on ways to assist and re-energise young Australians to save for their home and to be building in the, investing in the building of Australia's future. Innovation is needed to create pathways, and fortunately, that is the Liberal way.